Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing how to create this gorgeous easel card featuring the Pure Joy product suite from Pink Fresh Studio. This features this beautiful circular design. It's available in the press plate option as well as a stamp set and you can see those beautiful florals and hummingbird there. There is also a layering stencil set, which I'll be using today, and coordinating dies, and I will be using those as well. And I love that the inner pieces and the outer pieces separate. Now here are the inks that I'm gonna be using. For the hummingbird are all the inks on the left. I'm gonna be using these pinks for the florals, which is cherry blossom and peony, and finally mint for the background. I'll also reuse that citron and Spanish moss for my greenery. So I'm gonna be kind of mixing and matching all of these inks together and blending multiple colors into a single stencil image. And that's gonna give me a lot of color on this beautiful hummingbird. So I'm starting out with my Misty stamping tool and I have a piece of white cardstock tucked into that upper right corner. I am gonna be doing some heat embossing for this. So I've prepped the surface of my white cardstock with a powder tool. And now I'm inking up this gorgeous stamp with some Versamark ink and stamping that onto my white cardstock. And I'm just using my stamp press tool from Pink Fresh Studio to make sure that I get good pressure all over the surface of the stamp. And then I can remove this cardstock from my Misty stamping tool. And I'm going to add some gold embossing powder. This is Brutus Monroe Gilded Embossing Powder. You can see I'm just shaking it on the entire stamped image so I get a good coverage tapping it off there, and then I'm going to heat set it. Now I like to look from the side at my embossing powder to make sure that there are no grainy areas, make sure everything's melted and shiny, and that's how I know I have a great heat embossed image. And you can see it looks really beautiful in this gold. You could also foil this with that press plate and use a foiled option for this as well. So now it is time to start adding some color to this beautiful image. I'm gonna use a grip mat on my work surface to hold my stencils in place as I do my stenciling. Now for this project today, I'm actually skipping stencil number one. You can see it on the right hand side of my screen because that color's in the background and I'm gonna do something a little bit different for that. So I'm starting out with stencil number two and I've inked citron ink over the entire image. And I am now grabbing my Spanish moss and a half inch blending brush. And I'm gonna bring just a little bit of shading into the bottom portions of these leaves with that darker ink. Now these greens are pulling some double duty for me today. They are a brighter, more yellowy green. They're some of Pink Fresh newer colors. And I chose them because I could use that citron for the belly of my hummingbird, which you're seeing me add here. So I'm just coming in with a tiny bit of that citron on the underbelly of my hummingbird. And then I am taking a larger blending brush and I'm adding Atlantis ink over the rest of the hummingbird. And I'm going to come in from the tip of the wing and a little bit towards the center part of that wing and add stargazer. So I've added three different colors here. You can see I kind of like wipe off my stencil between colors because I don't want my brush or my project to pick up those colors that are sitting on top of the stencil. Now I went ahead and inked the florals in Cherry Blossom, my favorite pink from Pink Fresh Studio. And now I have my next stencil, which should be stencil number four if I'm going in order, I think I am. <laughs> And I'm adding some details onto the hummingbird using that stargazer ink. So this is kind of a blue that has a lot of purple in it, to my eye anyway. And I think that it kind of helps bridge the gap between this Atlantis color and the candy violet, which I'm going to use in just a bit. So you're seeing me bring in the candy violet. I used a little bit of stargazer, a little bit of Atlantis, and then I'm coming in with the candy violet on the tips of these wings to really bring in a purple color. And these colors just all mix together so beautifully. Now for the detail on the florals, I'm using peony ink. And now I'm coming in with this stencil, which colors in some details of the greenery, as well as the little base of the flowers, which are green. I'm only inking the base of the florals. I'm not doing the detail portions on the leaves that I colored in earlier with a couple of colors, I think because I didn't realize there was that detail piece. <laughs> 
So I inked the beak using some apricot ink and then that finishes off all of my inking. Isn't this beautiful? I love all the colors on the hummingbird. I think it's a gorgeous pop and we're gonna make him sparkly here in just a bit. But first we're gonna take and we are going to die cut all of these images using the internal die. Now there's like an internal and an external die. We're gonna use both of those today. Now this internal die allows you to cut all of these inner pieces out separately. So you can see I have each floral separately, the hummingbird, and this outer die, which I'm die cutting from white cardstock, allows you to cut the image out in its entirety without individual pieces, or you can cut a backer like I'm doing today to add these pieces onto. And I have cut that backer from white cardstock, and now I'm using the Pink Fresh Studio Mint Ink to add just a tad bit of color to this background. Now each of these pieces that I die cut earlier, I actually stacked up two plain white die cuts behind them. So they have a little bit of dimension and I am going to use the inner die over the outer die. I'm just lining that up to help me get my items in position. So I'm starting out with the hummingbird, just kind of lining up the inner die with the outer die and eyeballing it and placing those down using liquid glue. Now it's very helpful because the outside edge of this outer die kind of has the places where each of the leaves nestles in. So it's really easy to kind of piece these all back together, but you can absolutely use that inner die to help you as you go along. So once I get all of these pieces positioned onto that backdrop, it looks absolutely beautiful. I love the dimension behind each of these individual pieces that I'm placing on the background. And I love that whisper of the mint color in the background because it really allows these other colors to kind of shine in a different way. So I'm just kind of wiggling those all into place, making sure I have them where I want them. And then I set it aside with an acrylic block on top and this is the finished piece. Now, isn't this gorgeous? But I thought it could be even more gorgeous. <laughs> So I am taking a shimmer pin here and I'm adding a layer of shimmer over my entire hummingbird. Now I went ahead and stamped out and embossed one of the sentiments that is from the Pure Joy stamp set. I die cut it using the coordinating dies and stacked up a couple of plain white die cut layers behind it to give it a little more dimension. And now I'm gluing it kind of to that lower right portion of this circle element that's eventually going to be the focal point of our easel card. So I'll get that position and then I'll lay an acrylic block over it and allow it to dry. Now here is where we're starting our vertical easel card. And I have a piece of white cardstock that's cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches. And I am scoring it at five and a half inches, just like you would a normal A2 size card base. Now I have a piece of ivory cardstock and I have die cut it using the dotted scallop background from Pink Fresh Studio. It adds a lot of texture and I love this simple pattern. It is so beautiful. And so um, it has a really feminine feel to me and I thought that would be a beautiful touch on this card. I've adhered it to my card base and now I am taking a T-square ruler and I'm kind of just using this to help me mark kind of my midway point on this card base. And I'm only marking on the outer portion. I'm not drawing a line all the way across. We're gonna do some partial die cutting. So those marks are gonna help me line up my cutting plate where I need it on the card front to do some partial die cutting. So I have my element here and I've placed it onto my card front where I want it. And now I am taking the outer outline die and placing it right over that image and then removing the image from beneath so that I can hold this in place and run this through my die cut machine. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of mint tape here to hold my die in position. And I only want to die cut the upper portion of this die. So I am taking one of my cutting plates. This is actually a smaller cutting plate than the others, but you could use a regular size cutting plate as well. And I'm lining it up with those two lines on the outer edge of my card base. And then I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine. And that leaves me with the upper portion of this die cut from both layers of cardstock and the lower portion not cut at all. So only what was between those two cutting plates is what cut. So I cut the upper portion of this outline die, but not the lower portion. And that's gonna allow us to create this easel, shaped easel 
card. I think this is a really fun way to use the stamp and die set and it allows the recipient to kind of put this up on display. So now I'm taking my scoreboard again and I am scoring from the edge of the card to the beginning of that die cut line. So it's about at two and three quarters, three inches. You'll just wanna line it up on your scoring tool and I'm only scoring the, those outer edges. So you can see when I fold on those score lines, this shaped piece pops up. And that's going to allow me to put my element that I created earlier right onto that shaped piece and it's gonna create a beautiful easel for the recipient. So I'm adding this piece on. I put glue all over the back side of this. You don't have to avoid any portions with the glue. And I place that onto the die cut element, lining it up with the outer edge. And then I am taking an acrylic block and laying it over the top and allowing it to dry. Now to hold my easel in place, I'm gonna use a strip of cardstock on the inside. And I grabbed the Farm Fresh stamp set from Pink Fresh Studio and just stamped a greeting onto some ivory cardstock and trimmed that down. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape runner adhesive onto the back and then I'm going to place this on the inside of the card and this is going to create a stopper for my easel. So it's going to be what holds the easel up while it's on the recipient's desk or mantle or wherever it might be. Uh, hopefully it's not in their trash can. <laughs> because we spend a lot of time on these cards. So you can see once I have that positioned, this is going to be what keeps that card front kind of in that popped up easel position. Isn't that cool? I thought this was such a fun design for this particular stamp set. And you could absolutely try this with other stamp sets in your stash as well. Now to add a little bit more of sparkle and shine to this card, I decided to use the iridescent clear drops from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm adding those on using my dual tipped embellishment tool and some liquid glue. And that finishes off my beautiful Pure Joy easel card. This was actually really easy to put together. It's one of the easier interactive card designs. And I love how it allows that imagery to really just be put on display because that hummingbird, especially with all the sparkle on it, is absolutely beautiful. Now, if you wanted a little bit different look, you could actually place the individual elements like the hummingbird and the florals directly onto the die cut card front and not use a backer like I did. But I wanted that extra pop or whisper of that mint ink behind all of my elements. I think it really just kind of brings that all to life. Now, as always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. As always, I wanna say thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this project. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here so you don't miss any of the fabulous paper crafting and card making tutorials shared here. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.